Hello. I'm Aaron Hood. What do you say we make some garlures tonight? I'm going to show you how. All right. First of all, let's talk about what we need. Ah, love Dr. Pepper. First, you're going to need to find yourself some nylon rope. You're going to need to separate it and fray it. See how I got that separated fairly well. And then your tools, you need a, a pair of pliers or a pair of dikes like this, something you can cut wire with. You can use needle nose, you can use wire cutters. Now, you also need wire. I use uh, what's called florist wire. You can get it at a craft store. It's a 26 gauge, quarter pound, and this is green. All right, that's the gauge of the wire. And of course, you're going to need big hooks. I'm using a hook such as this. Now, nine times out of ten, you're not going to catch the gar with the hook. The hook is pretty much for you to have something to tie the line onto. How you're going to catch the gar with this lure is by the rope getting tangled in their teeth. Each lure is going to last for about a good handful of catches, six to ten, because the gar's teeth will tear it up and it will tangle pretty bad and you'll have to make another one. All right, so here's our rope and here's our hook. First thing we're going to do is we're going to tie the end of the rope in a good knot. You can uh, just do a regular old box knot, like you tie your shoes with, or a granny knot. You can double it up if you like. Get it nice and tight. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to put the hook through the knot. You can see that? Put it through as such. Be a little trying, but there we go. And it's through. All right, now that we got the hook through the, uh, the knot, you're going to take yourself a pair of scissors, one item I forgot, <laughs> cut the end of the rope off. Another thing I forgot to mention, you need a source of pyromania. In my case, I use a lighter. You can use a flame torch or whatever you got. Actually, uh, just use the lighter. And see what I'm doing? Singe the end so it doesn't come unraveled. But here in a second, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Make sure the, uh, the shaft of the hook and the rope are fairly even. You want the, uh, the rope split in half like this over the, the shaft where it sits even inside the hook sits even in with the rope such as that all right now put that down get yourself some wire out we are going to unspool about about a foot to a foot and a half there take the wire cutters Cut the wire, find the, uh, the center of the wire, fold the wire in half. Up at the top of the hook where the eye is, right beneath the eye, put the center of the wire there. Then with the two strand of wire you have exposed now, Tightly wind the wire around the rope and the shaft. One trick I find to get it really tight is to start one strand, do a few good wraps, then go in the opposite direction with the other strand, a few good wraps. See, I'm holding the eye of the hook as I wrap. This is like a, 
do-it-yourself giant fly fishing, how to tie a, a giant fly. Now you don't have to get it pretty and you don't have to get it ugly, you can do, how, do it however you want. Either way it will work as long as it's tightly wrapped and it's going down the shaft. It'll keep the, uh, the rope adhered to the, uh, the hook and it's not going to go anywhere. And it does look cool. It's like a giant fly. Get it all wrapped on there nice and tight, nice and good. Going down the shaft. Always wrapping each strand in the opposite direction of the other one. There's a reason for it. And the reason is when you get to the end, you need to get your pliers after you crisscross it like that. Get your pliers, grab the, uh, the two strands su as such, and start twisting, and this will tighten it up real good. This will keep the, uh, the wire from coming loose. Then take your, uh, your wire cutters and snip that down close to the rope. There we go. Now the other reason why I like to make these with a hook. Not everybody makes them with a hook, by the way. It's because I, I use a float for these. Let me uh, shorten this. You want about a good uh, good six inches or so of, of rope hanging off the hook, if I didn't mention that earlier. And there we go. There's the finished product. Now, the reason why I like to put the, the hook on there because I do use a float and I put a little piece of shrimp on here and I throw this out and I wait for the guard to come into the area and I start jigging on the, uh, the line and making a little activity going on out there and he can smell that shrimp and he's more interested in it but guard are typically very uh, curious about everything around them if something new is in the water they'll go inspect it like a lot of times you'll see guard swimming over to your float to check it and they might bite at it or something if it moves. So that's that's how I fish this with a little bit of shrimp on the hook and I put a float on there so I can keep it high in the water column. I do a lot of sight fishing with the, the gar. I like to see them. I don't just throw it willy-nilly. I, I go and find them and I do it at night. Typically a hot night. That's when I have my best uh, success with gar. Now let me show you some of the ones I've made in the past. This is the first one that I ever made. This is a simpler form of it. You just get your nylon rope, you separate and fray it a bit like this, a knot with the singe, and you just have the hook through here without any wire, and the, the rope lure just hangs off the end of the hook. And here's a, a couple others that I've made the same way with the wire. I prefer these. All right. I hope you enjoyed my little how-to video. Good luck fishing out there. Tight lines and take care.